astrology of summer solstice, the longest of days, written, directed, and produced by Reverend Dr. Vicki Jo Mullen. In this video, Reverend Dr. Mullen will discuss Midsummer Day, the longest day of the year. This year it falls on the Feast of St. John, and she will talk about the significance of St. John's wart in association with the summer solstice. She will also discuss the pentagram symbol as it is associated with midsummer. I'm astrologer and paranormal investigator, Dr. Dickie Jo Mullen, coming to you from downtown Orlando, Florida, with a special astrological look at the ingress for summer, the summer solstice. The summer solstice, the longest day of the year, is when light and darkness give way and the days of light that have been getting longer and longer since the winter solstice start to turn and the dark part of the year is beginning. Celebrating this longest day of the year is something that's been observed worldwide for centuries. It's called Midsummer's Day and every culture um, around the world at some point in its history has marked this time of the year as enchanted. The Celts, the Nordic people, uh, have observed three spirit nights in the year when magic abounded and the veil between this world and the next one opens. Other cross-quarter days, Halloween and May Eve and Lamas Eve, correlate with midsummer, and these are nights when the fae folk are most active and offer a true glimpse of the future which can be uncovered at the summer solstice. The sun rises on this day with great power and it brings out dormant, dormant powers in sacred stones, crystals, and plants. Along the horizon, a shimmer of heat arises on Midsummer's Day. Some see it as a magical energy that's felt and seen visibly, a misty gate in the warm air that has an otherworldly quality. Call it Avalon, the summer land, renewed life, eternal youth. Shakespeare's play A Midsummer Night's Dream captures the occasion with poetry and cosmology. The Aztecs celebrated Midsummer's Day, as did the ancient Egyptians. In the Old Testament, hints at vestiges of these festivities. Sun wheels, rituals for love and growth, candlelight, torchlight processions, magic to bless crops or love, divination for the season all come about as we celebrate the peak of the light when the light begins to give way to the darkness. Right now, Midsummer's Day, winter's cold, dark days are far away, and it's a time of light, celebration, and growth. The exact date of the summer solstice varies according to the latitude of the, of the uh, location and also the various years. We all know about leap year when the length of the year is a little different and that affects the exact date. In the northern hemisphere, this will be the 20, 20th, 21st, or 22nd of June and it's in, in December in the summer southern hemisphere for our listeners in Australia and New Zealand. The year of 2022, the summer solstice will be at 5.14 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on June 21st. This is what the sky chart looks like in Central Florida on that day. And this is when the sun enters the zero degree of the sign of cancer, and it's the exact moment of summer. One of the magics of this horoscope is that it foretells what the next season will bring, and there's a great deal going on in our world. It's a turning point for humanity that's been predicted for hundreds of years by seers such as Black Elk, Nostradamus, 
Edgar Casey and others such as Mother Shipton. And we can all see this daily, that humanity is definitely going through a turning point. This summer will be extremely significant as far as what is happening here. Let's take a look at the chart on a broad scale and then also with each of the individual birth signs. As the sun enters zero degrees of Cancer on June 21st of 2022, 5.14 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time again, we see that the sign of Gemini is rising and Mercury, the planet of travel and communication, is exactly on the ascendant. Now this chart will be foretelling what's going on in the world until the first day of autumn, the autumn equinox. That's when the sun enters zero Libra and there will be a new season. But with this prediction, we can expect there to be a lot going on involving travel, mass travel. The world of education relates to Mercury and overall meetings, communications, and protests. Venus, the planet of love, pleasure, and money, is at 28 degrees of Taurus in this chart, very close to the fixed star Pleiades. Venus in Taurus relates to music, home gardens, loyalty, stability in relationships of a social nature. And so the whole idea of commitment and loyalty will appeal to people more than kind of playing the field. Home gardens are very popular, both, be, both as a source of food and pleasure and entertainment, and new trends in music can be important. The Venus in Taurus is conjunct the Moon's North Node and also the planet Uranus which are from 17 to 21 degrees of Taurus. This all relates to money and the economy, the value of financial situations, financial rules for financial management. All that is going through a vast change because Uranus, the planet of shocks and upsets, is involved. There's a very strong 12th house in this birth chart and this is indicating much going on behind the scenes, beneath the surface. All isn't quite as it seems, getting both sides of the story, investigating in order to find truth is extremely significant. Mars, the planet of energy, drive, and initiative is in its own sign of Aries, conjunct Chiron, which represents healing, Jupiter, which represents growth, and the moon, which represents the flow of everyday life for masses of people. This forms a four-planet stellum in the sign of Aries. Aries does relate to war, so the various wars and conflicts going on are still here. Um, the Air sign of Aries also rules guns and the gun control issue. It looks as if it's going to mutate in different ways and be quite unsettled and unsettling. Neptune, the planet of spirituality, continues a long transit through the sign of Pisces. So prayer, faith healing, visualization, meditation groups will be significant to many. Saturn, the planet that rules elderly people, the poor, health in general, is an Aquarius and it's retrograde. And so ongoing social issues, disparaging, dis, uh, disparaging situations and discrepancies in standard of living are here. The planet Pluto is in Capricorn, which relates a lot to the stability of the planet and to weather patterns. The Capricorn um, position of Pluto is square the Aries placements, particularly the orb is tight with Mars, and I do think that there will be some extreme weather situations to cope with in the new season to come. There's lots of evidence 
that 30,000 years ago or so, prehistoric people recognized the importance of the summer solstice and other significant days in the year, the placement of stones, posts, and pegs in archaeological sites will show the position of the sun, and even today it's accurate. By the time of the New Stone Age, that was 8,000 years ago, the stone circles, we know these as Stonehenge and Avebury in England and Poverty Point in Louisiana, were constructed. In ancient China, the summer solstice accented the union of light and dark, and thinking of the year, the yin and yang symbol was developed with the white and the dark um, halves of that symbol. In ancient Rome, Juno, the queen of heaven and women, the wife of Jupiter, was honored during the month of June in the solstice, and she, of course, became Mary, the queen of heaven, in the Christian church. The summer solstice is also sacred to Vesta, the goddess of the hearth fire, and eight days of offerings of sacred grains, fires lit to ward off evil, were recorded. In Africa, Fatima, or Fatima, a daughter of Mohammed, was honored. In the country of Spain, three women carry baskets of bread to call down blessings of the Queen of Heaven on the summer solstice. In the United States, we have in Arizona the Kakinas, messengers from the mountains bringing news of the light. In Southern California, the Shaumas Native American nation still holds a summer solstice festival on Pine Mountain, a place of deep mystery at this special time of the year. The Feast of St. John the Baptist correlates with the summer solstice, June 19th through 24th. This is celebrated, and again, it's a fire festival a burning, shining light. Bonfires across Europe and North Africa to Siberia to bring protection from evil spirits are lit on the longest of days and the shortest of nights. After sundown, on the shortest night of the year, in parts of the Celtic kingdoms, England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and Cornwall, a poem from the Tudor era is still recited. This is an excerpt from it. When midsummer comes with heavens and homes do bonfires make, and swiftly then run, leaping over the same, link hands, big pipes sound around, and no malice is found among the stands. This dates from about 1485 to 1603. In Cornwall, a chain of bonfires um, will be lit, usually with herbs and wild flowers involved. And one of the flowers that we'll find is St. John's wort, a yellow flower. It's um, seen as a common weed, and it is used as an antidepressant. St. John's oil and also the herb is brewed as a tea and taken in capsules rivals any of the um, antidepressants many believe in recon reconciling negativity and having a positive state of mind. In Ireland, large communal fires are lit, music, dance, merriment, cleansing, forgiveness, release. Spiritual work for divination often is enjoyed on Midsummer's Eve. Get out your tarot cards, get some tea leaves, palmistry charts, horoscopes to see what's going on. Pillows made with sage encourage prophecy. You can make an herb pillow, just a small, um, sort of a little sack with the herbs in it to actually tuck in a more comfortable pillow will work. If you don't like sage, rosemary, which brings pleasant dreams and protection. Oak leaves for, to see what's going on with love. Laurel leaves or bay leaves are good. Writing a wish on a slip of paper and wrapping it around a bay leaf is a very popular way 
to um, call on the magic of midsummer. In a new planter, plant a bulb or flower seeds, and as you're planting them, this prayer, as this root grows and as this blossom blows, may what I wish be turned on to me. Speaking of oak leaves, the oak king and the holly king are two representations of the dark and light side of the year that we see in the yin and the yang symbol in the Orient. In the Celtic tradition, the holly king appears at King Arthur's court and the oak king relates to Sir Gawain or the Green Knight who slays the holly king and then um, they have a rematch on Midsummer, and the whole legend is very interesting to study in terms of the dark and light sides of the year. An Irish custom is to walk around the fire on Midsummer's Eve and cast a pebble at each passage. You might walk three times. That's a sacred number. Sometimes other numbers like seven or nine are used. And saying a prayer or request for good health. Um, a cure for asthma or breathing problems is related to this tradition. A midsummer candle spell that's really delightful is to take a yellow or gold colored candle to represent the sun and say, in honor of the sun and the moon, grant me fruitfulness and profit in my work, so mote it be. Getting a large bowl of ice water and setting it in the sun, and then putting melted candle wax in it. Those jar candles are really good, a gold or yellow one. Let the candle wax go in and see what's formed. I had a clown's shoe form once and I was offered a job working with some clowns doing tea leaf readings. So, you know, it did work and so you might see a heart, you might see a symbol of your work. For example, if you're a photographer, there might be a camera. If you're a writer, a computer, or maybe a pencil or pen. Um, if you like animals, maybe a favorite animal will form in the wax cast into the secret is to let the sunlight shine on a bowl of ice water for a bit and then pour the hot candle wax all at once into the bowl and something will form immediately that has a meaning for you. About an eighth of a cup or a generous spoonful of wax is plenty to try that. St. John's wort, again the plant that I mentioned, is native to Europe it has yellow star-shaped flowers, and St. John is a patron of Midsummer's Day. And the thought of getting rid of negativity, clearing away depression, is part of the holiday. Um, St. John's wort can be used as a prescription for mild to moderate depression. Many herbalists will prescribe it. And there's a lot of interest in it right now. You can take up to 900 milligrams a day. Beyond that, you have to be careful with it causing anxiety or interactions with other medicines. But it has a very big following. It has been used since Pennsylvania. Um, 25 species came to North America from Europe. And in 1793, it, was be it began to be used as sort of a mood-altering tea. It grows also in Montana. Squeezing the flowers, they will bleed a reddish-purple liquid. And this does stain their longitudinal ridges along the edges of the st stem. It gives an illusion of being flat if you're looking for the proper plant. That'll help you to find it because it does grow wild or you can buy it in any herb store. Thinking of the ingress chart, getting back to the summer solstice. Now this varies from year to year, but this will be apropos to the year of 2022 and it begins on June 21st. In the first house of the chart is the sign of Gemini. If your birth sign is Gemini, you're going to be thinking about your personal appearance, your image, 
and your environment. The first house is the self and the physical environment. It also has a bearing on health, and uh, health practices will be particularly interesting. If your birth sign is cancer, um, the second house, which is business and finance, is going to be of interest to you and your salable job skills. In the third house, if you are a Leo, that will represent transportation, interactions with neighbors, sisters and brothers, and also learning and the world news. If you are a Leo, it's the fourth house, heritage, home, family, real estate, residence. If you are a Virgo and there's an interception with Libra in the fifth house, it's all about love. Love and romance, pleasure, leisure, recreation, vacation time, sports and games. Scorpio, the sixth house is animals for you. And then also, it's going to be an interest in health and daily service and, and routine. Sagittarians, relationships, teamwork, partnerships, romantically or business. It's all about other people, group and crowd dynamics. Also law, justice and balance for Sagittarius. For Capricorns, it's the eighth house. Invested or inherited money can be of interest to you, but also the afterlife, the spirit world. I have a very dear friend who is talking about visiting the Pulse Massacre, our massacre site here in Orlando, a great tragedy. Most of you have probably heard about it. And it was a nightclub shooting. This is the anniversary of the tragedy, and there may be a lot of interest in that and other afterlife encounters and interests for those who are heavily Capricorn. For Aquarians, it's the ninth house. Overseas travel can be of interest to you. And also higher education, higher learning, and anything to do with in-laws um, can also be a focus in grandparent, grandchild memories or interactions. And for Pisces people, it'll be all about your career fame and fortune, the tenth house, you may have a turning point going on as far as long-term career success. The eleventh house, Aries is there, and part of um, Taurus is intercepted. For Aries people, you'll be thinking about your social circle, long-term hopes, wishes, and goals, and also social service, and things that involve the world in general. You might do some work at a food pantry or to help those that have been displaced because of the various tragedies in the world. You Tauruses, the 12th house will be strong. You might do some work with those who have been victims also engaged in institutions. I have one Taurus friend who's been talking about taking service dogs to hospitals. That type of thing could be of interest to Taurus people who are um, experiencing this summer solstice of 2022. And another interest has to do with wanting to be alone, being fed up with a few things, and just wanting some quiet peace and quiet time, possibly going out into nature, wilderness areas and remote isolated areas go with the twelfth house influence and that is Taurus people for this idea of doing a sun sign astrology look at the ingress. Now the entire birth chart can modify that but looking at the page six sun signs, those are the familiar birth signs that everybody knows. Um, this gives you a place to start and see how the summer season describes what's going on in your journey through the various houses of the zodiac. 
This is Dickie Joe Mullen in downtown Orlando, Florida, wishing you a bright and beautiful summer solstice. I have a picture here that shows a pentagram, a symbol that represents the human body and blessings within a symbol of the sun to symbolize the good luck and all of the magic of the seasons. Reverend Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen astrologer, psychic, and parapsychologist. Dr. Mullen provides the following services, astrology, psychic, rune, and tarot card readings, face-to-face -face and Zoom readings and seances, and webinars and face-to-face -face presentations. Thank you for watching. Reverend Dr. Dickie Jo Mullen can be contacted at her skymaiden at juno.com email address. She also has a Facebook page, which she invites you to view, and her WordPress site, where she has additional resources.